Welcome back, friends, to King's Quest 2, part 2 of our wholesome Let's Play. Alright, more jewelry. I do like the option that King's Quest 1 and apparently King's Quest 2 does provide that you have multiple ways of solving a puzzle. But... If that nightingale needs to come back to its original owner, I say we help it. But first, we save. Hagatha has already killed me once. She just may do it again. She's not here. You look around this dreary cave... Fear grips you as you notice human skulls lining the wall. A cauldron with a bubbling brew fills the cave with a putrid aroma. You see a nightingale in a gilded cage. Look, cauldron. The iron cauldron is bubbling with a nasty smelling brew. A hot fire burns underneath. Look, nightingale. The beautiful nightingale is in a gilded cage. Well, I do not want to scare the bird, so put cloth on cage. You drape the cloth over the bird cage. Hopefully this will keep the nightingale quiet. Take cage. Quietly you pick up the covered bird cage with the nightingale. To your relief, the bird remains silent. That one I just happened to remember from playing the game previously. I, uh, I just remember dying here. As you leave the dark cave, you remove the cloth from the cage. Yeah. That sound right there. The, the lovely... The lovely tweeting. Uh, the old hack Hagatha is nearby. We... Must get out of here. I believe if you don't put the cloth over the nightingale... She makes those sounds much sooner and alerts Hagatha much quicker. Meaning you don't escape. Instead, take another swim inside of her cauldron. Alright, so now we can go back to the shop and get our oil lamp. Such a beautiful and vivacious area, except for the strange poison swamp in the middle of it all. A little old lady in the antique shop says, How may I help you? I have returned with your bird. You hand the bird cage with the nightingale to the little old lady. My precious, she exclaims. In gratitude, she gives you the oil lamp. Good luck, she says. She hastens you out the door and closes up the shop. Uh, whoa, you <laughs> just, you were transported outside. Let's see, let's get into a safe little area here. Look at our new treasure, the lamp. The old oil lamp is fashioned of brass that has been tarnished. There is a spout at one end and a round handle at the other. The lamp is empty inside. Well, just judging from the look of it and from what I know of lamps, rub the lamp. There he is, a new friend we've made. When you rub the tarnished brass lamp, you hear a poof and a genie appears. Master, he says, I leave a gift for you, a magic carpet. The genie then poofs back into the lamp. A magic carpet, you say? The magic carpet is a beautifully woven Persian rug with a colorful fringe on the ends. Well, if I also know about my magic carpets. Yes, going to new heights indeed. This time, the carpet will show me a whole new world. And, well, well let's save it real quick, because I'm not sure. I don't remember this part quite well. Do I? Do I remember this part well? Let's see. Uh, well, we should get three wishes, right? 
Rub lamp again. This is a good sign. Uh, hmm. Master, he says, I leave a gift for you. A beautiful sword. The genie then disappears. And one more time. Dance to the music. Master, I leave a gift for you. A leather bridle. The genie then pops back into the lamp. Oh no, the lamp has disappeared from your hands. Oh no, no more lamp. But we do have a sword. The shining sword is not incredibly large, but it is very sharp. It has a snake carved into the bronze handle. Ooh, and a bridle. The leather bridle is studded with silver rivets and a silver bit. Now, I didn't necessarily... Look out! There is a poisonous viper blocking your path. Let's just call it into King's Quest V. A poisonous... Let's see. Okay, I do remember the snake. I do remember the snake because I think everyone attacks the snake with a sword, but it's kind of rude. Kind of, uh, kind of not nice, dare I say it. So instead of using the sword, let's use the third gift. Use bridle on snake. Use bridle on snake. Not right now. Th throw bridle on snake. <laughs> oh, good thing I guessed that. You toss the leather bridle onto the coiled snake. Instantly there stands before you not a snake but a beautiful winged horse wearing the bridle. Beware, the fairy spell has worn off. Oh, we don't need protection. We've made a new friend. Thank you, kind sir, for saving me. An evil enchanter turned me into a snake when I refused to be his steed. To repay you, here is a magic sugar cube that will guard against poisonous brambles. Goodbye. Goodbye, friend. Yes, I believe everybody uses the sword on the snake, killing the snake, but I don't remember if that gives you the sugar cube, so that might dead end you, but I can't recall. Let's see. There's a large cave opening on the steep mountainside, but what about this? There's a hole right here. Oh no, this is as bad as bad can be. Upon looking into the hole, you believe you see an incredibly blatant plug for another Sierra 3D animated adventure. Hang on. <laughs> Okay, well, this is a uh, uh, funny and uh, creative way to plug your game. And deep, uh, unbeknownst to the dreaded Sarians, those, oh, Space Quest is a 3D animated adventure game. As a hero, you'll uh, visit bizarre planets. <laughs> gotta keep up, gotta keep up with this commercial. Oh, no. Get friendly with the wildlife and get acquainted with some darn interesting folks. So step up to the bar and have a cool one and enjoy some of the best entertainment in the universe. Enjoy, for soon you'll come face to face with the dreaded Sarians. Briefly befuddled by this bizarre event, you brace yourself and continue with the quest before you. This is not the time for King's Quest, or <laughs> this is not the time for Space Quest. This is the time for King's Quest. Ah, a new key. You see a large golden key lying on a rock in the damp cave. Well, it was very nice for me to see some of Space Quest gameplay. I do love Space Quest. In fact, I might like Space Quest more than King's Quest. <laughs> Good old Roger Wilco and his quest against the Sarians. Uh, well, actually, let's ride... Carpet. There we go. The carpet will help speed things up for us. We had to go down the cliff anyway. Okay, so that was key number two. And now... Go back to... Well, might as well get a little spell here. And then be on our way. Thank you, magical fairy. 
Who knows what dangers lurk behind the shadows when I open the second door? Or maybe I just need your protection so I don't fall down the cliff and... Okay, I managed that one correctly. Hopefully the bridge supports me. Yes. Things are going very well. Okay, okay. Turn it back to fast and save our game. Door two. And this time I know it is unlock door. The key to the second door fits easily into the keyhole. You turn the key and shazam, the door opens and the second gold key disappears, revealing a third door with yet another inscription. We are at a Russian doll scenario. Read inscription. Whosoever chooses to seek the last key must have a stout heart. All right. Um, turn back to fastness. A stout heart, you say? Sounds like something an adventurer would have. Let us see. Well, there's... One place we definitely haven't checked out yet, though we have seen it. I am, of course, talking about the castle. The castle beyond the poisonous swamp. You have run into an evil enchanter. Let's hope the fairy's spell works. Oh, let's test it out. I just saved it. See what happens. Okay, that was super fast. <laughs> I tried to slow it down just a little to see what happened, but it seems like he just disappeared. That's fine for me, as long as we are alive. Alive so we may continue our adventure as we look for love. We must find love. You saw how empty my kingdom was. I would at least like somebody to share my throne with. Ooh. He's new. Let's see. There is a desolate island in the middle of the poisoned lake. A shrouded figure stands silent. I can only think that this shrouded figure is death. So, let's talk to death. Talk to figure. You get no response from the figure. Get in boat. The spooky fiend holds out a bony claw as if re as if in request for a payment of some kind. Hmm. We can definitely pay him. Or, since we know Dracula is involved and there is a castle, maybe we can fool him. Put on ring. You're now wearing the beautiful ruby ring. Put on cloak. With a flourish, you fling the black cloak around your neck and fasten it. And now, get on boat. Get closer, and then get on boat. The shrouded ghoul looks at the ruby ring on your finger and the black cloak around your neck. He motions for you to enter the boat, which you do. You must have fooled him into thinking you were someone else. And look, the castle looks cold and forbidding. Two dark towers rise on either side of it. The castle is surrounded by deadly thorns and brambles. Brambles, I've heard that word before, so I should eat my sugar cube. After swallowing the magic sugar cube, you get a feeling of invincibility. Get off boat. Uh, um, leave boat. Yes. Do not harm me, Brambles, for I have eaten a sugar cube. That is all I need to do. There are two spooky ghosts guarding the door of the gloomy castle. This situation looks bad. Um, talk it out. Talk it out. When you speak to the ghosts, they utter a mournful wail. Kiss ghost. 
not right now. Okay, well maybe the two spirits are fooled by the black cloak and the large ruby ring that you are wearing. They slowly float away. Maybe you remind them of someone else. Oh, well. Putting on those clothes has helped in two matters. Oh, yes. Well, perfect time to save as stairs will be the death of me. I think that was just perfect. It would be par for the course if I fall off the stairs. I already fell off the ladder today, so stairs wouldn't be too different. Let's see here. What do we have? The musty bedchamber is at the top of a tower. It has the smell of mold and old mothballs. There is a sagging bed and an old dresser in the room. Look, bed. The bed is lumpy and sagging in the middle. A faded old quilt covers it. Take quilt. The quilt is old and tattered. You wouldn't want it. Hmm. Look under beds. Try that twice. Can't do that. Okay. Open drawer. There is a candle lying in the drawer of the old dresser. Okay. Take candle. You pick it up and carry it with you. I have a candle. Of course, I imagine this castle shall get very spooky. Spooky indeed. I mean, we've, we've already got... We already have death. We already have ghosts, and we well look around here. There's a ramp spiraling up toward the top of a gloomy tower. A torch blazes on the wall. Well, we have the torch here, so light candle. You hold your candle up to the blazing torch. It catches. Your candle is now lit. Don't necessarily remember this part, but I don't doubt it. I believe we shall reach some catacombs. We will need that candle. This castle is really creepy. Cracks cover the walls. Cobwebs fill the corners. A chilly draft runs through the halls. Is that a bookshelf? Probably not. This is the dingy dining room of the drafty old castle. I wouldn't say that. I think this castle has a lot of charm. Ants crawl among old bits of food, simply just adding to the charm. Dust covers a dilapidated tabletop, dare I say, making it even more charming. A delicious looking smoked ham is on the table. Mmm, mmm, smoked ham. If only it was steamed. Steamed hams. Let's see. Well, whoa, yep, going into the catacombs. Let's see. Stairs. Oh, yes. Stairs. Stairs will be the death of me. Let us see what is down these stairs. Into the catacombs. Into the dungeon where the mice frolic and play. Let's see. Narrow, slippery stairs descend into this empty room. Fear not, for I have already conquered them. Your nose detects a foul odor coming from a doorway to the west. Let us see. What is so smelly over here? There is a beautiful, ornate coffin to one side of this dreadful room. Dust is everywhere. Cobwebs fill the corners, and a sickly odor permeates the air. I believe we should save our game. The Stench of Death. Look, Coffin. Trembling with fear, you peer into the ornate coffin. Finding it unoccupied, you see the interior is lined with shiny red satin. A red satin pillow lies at one end. Hmm. There's nobody here. Get in, coffin. <laughs> that is truly crazy. Oh. Yeah, it looked pretty comfortable. Inviting satin. <gasps> Something's different. 
At this distance, the candle does not provide enough light for you to see much detail. Save one more time. Look, coffin. At this distance, the candle does not... Okay, one more time. The lid of the beautifully carved coffin is closed. Open, coffin. With trepidation, you lift the heavy lid of the beautifully carved coffin. Your heart beats wildly when you see a vampire lying asleep within it. It must be... Bum, bum, bum. Count Dracula. Well, kiss Dracula. You can't do that right now? Okay. Talk Dracula. Count Dracula is fast asleep in his coffin. He pays you no heed. Well, Count Dracula is awake. Run before it's too late. Well, now's the time to talk to him. You are caught in Dracula's grasp. Saliva drips off the end of his sharp fangs. Suddenly, he is aware of the silver cross you are wearing around your neck. Count Dracula is terrified of the cross. He turns into a bat and flies away. Oh, well, there he goes. Didn't even give me the chance to talk to him. What? Was that him? Honestly, I don't think I've ever done this before, so I thought that was interesting. Did Dracula just... No, it's probably just the mouse. Coffin seems to be closed again, though. I thought the mouse was him, though. I thought he just kind of poofed. Open coffin. And I guess we'll kill Dracula. <laughs> just hammer right into him. The place, the pointed stake. Oh, you place the pointed stake on Count Dracula's chest. Quickly, using the mallet, you pound the stake through his heart. Dracula disintegrates into a pile of dust. A small silver key is left behind in the coffin. Take key. Look key. It is a shiny silver key. Let's look at the coffin one more time. Trembling with fear, you peer, ornate, mm -hmm. unoccupied, mm -hmm. shiny red satin. Red satin pillow. Take pillow. You remove the shiny red pillow from the coffin. Lo and behold, a large gold key was under the pillow. Ooh, take key. Okay, look, gold key. Shiny gold key. Okay. Let's see. Save game. Dracula didn't want to be... to be fry. He didn't want to be fry. I wanted him to be fry, but he didn't. And there it is. <laughs> There's me falling off the stairs, and uh, I guess just <laughs> tumbling and tumbling and tumbling for eternity. That is why you save early and save often. All right, let's not go so fast. I didn't know I could fall on that side of the stairs. But now that I know, we shall be much more safer about this entire situation. And success. But we have more of this castle to explore, and of course, more stairs to climb. There's a stairway spiraling up toward the top of a gloomy tower. A torch blazes on the wall. One more time, friends, as we climb the tower. All right, this looks a little tricky. Very tricky indeed. You fall to your death on the hard stone floor. <sighs> It's always the stairs. Always the stair. <laughs> Truly a master at the stairs now with such speed. Let's see. Save game. Oh. One more time. I'm feeling risky. Alright, and turn it to normal, save the game one more time, and oh yeah, there's that pace. Maybe I keep... 
Hmm. Hmm. Now I am confused and perplexed. How do I climb these stairs? Uh huh. Save it one more time. And just keep doing it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Maha. Success. We did it. But we are heroes, and we know how to adventure. We played King's Quest 1. There is not much here at the top of the tower, but an aging chest against the wall. Open chest. The old chest is locked shut. You need to unlock it. Unlock chest. With hands trembling, you fit the little silver key into the lock. Slowly you turn it until you hear a click. The old chest is now unlocked. Open chest. With a creak and a groan, the old lid opens, dragging cobwebs with it. Looking into the interior of the musty chest, you see a dazzling diamond and sapphire tiara. More jewelry. I shall take it. Take Tiara, you pick it up and carry it with you. Was it worth it? Was it worth all those deaths? I say yes, and we'll save, because we'll probably fall down these stairs again. Let's see. No, we will not fall this time. We will succeed, because I have you believing in me, as I believe in you. We can accomplish many great things together, such as climbing up and down stairs. But most specifically, stairs in Sierra games. The most difficult of stairs. The master, ultimate, final end boss of stairs. And there's our friend, who waited patiently. How oh, very nice. Get in boat. That's a nice little animation. I like that. I like the way Death looks when he's rowing that boat. And me, King Graham, just chilling with him. Save game. Out the castle. And increase the speed. There we are. We now have the third key for the third door, and I'm hoping that's the last door. Three is the magical number, so if there were four doors, I think I would simply go insane. Let us see what happens. I must cross the rickety bridge one more time, but I believe that it will, it will support me. I believe we can do it. You can do it, bridge. Yes. You did it, Bridge. All right, go back to fast and unlock door. The key to the third door fits easily into the keyhole. You turn the key and presto, the door opens and again the key disappears, revealing a world unlike any you've ever seen before. Whoa. Whoa, psychedelic world. The sand on the sparkling beach is a deep blue. The bright sunlight from a gorgeous pink sky dances across it. Cliffs tower above the beach. A beautiful world indeed. I love this purple waterfall. The sand on the spa. Alright, pretty much the same. Let's see. There's a fishing net in a pile on the beach. But what about this waterfall? It's drawing my eyes. The lavender waterfall tumbles down from the towering blue cliffs. Okay, that description is good enough for me. Let's see, take net. You reach down and retrieve the fishing net. Look net. The fishing net is fashioned from a material that is unfamiliar to you. It is smooth and tangle proof. Tangle proof, you say? I'll be a millionaire with this invention. If we have a fishing net, I say, we fish. You fish and fish and fish. However, no matter how hard you try, you don't seem to be able to catch anything. Fish. Uh, with 
net. You cast the fishing net into the wild sea. Upon retrieving it, you see you have caught a large golden fish. It falls from the net and flops helplessly on the beach. Helplessly. No. The large fish is covered with shimmering golden scales. Its graceful fins and tail are almost translucent. Right now, the beautiful fish is writhing in acne. No, what have I done? Take, uh, put fish back. Throw fish back in water. Take fish? You grab the flopping fish. Its mouth is wide open and its gills are extended. With difficulty, you hold the fish as it twists and turns in your hands. Throw fish in water. You throw the poor, gasping fish back into the iridescent water. Gratefully, it calls to you. In return for saving my life, I wish to offer you a ride across this ocean. Oh, look at that. We were the one who caught you, but we put you back. We shall ride you. Just like the seahorse. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm having a heck of a roller coaster ride. And more tumbling. You can see that the island is really quite small. The foliage is remarkable, though. Plants and flowers have overgrown it, and uh, uh, some growing very large in contrast to the tiny island. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. Fastest. A glint of metal catches your eye. You look toward the direction of the glint and see an amulet lying on the ground. Well, let's take amulet. Okay. Look, amulet. You examine the amulet. It is made of bronze that is tarnished with age. A tiger's eye stone is embedded into the front. You turn the amulet home and you see the word home engraved on the back. Home, you say? Home, indeed. Let's see here. Just explore the island a little bit. We are in a magical land. What knows could be waiting here? <gasps> Ooh. You can see that the... Well, we know that already. But this... This is new. You can see... No, it's not. It's the same. Look, tower, please. The tower is built of creamy, opaque quartz blocks. Qu quartz? We've heard that word before, too. You see a tiny window near the top. A delicate hand waving a hanky appears from the window. Hanky woman, I am coming. Let's see. Fast open door. There better not be. Of course, there are more stairs. More. Wait, no. <laughs> I meant to save the game. My brain is thinking ahead of me. More stairs. But we, we can conquer it. We can overcome the stairs. We can do it. Place your trust in me. Um, save game again. Yes. All right. So far, so good. Oh my goodness. Be careful. There is a huge lion with dripping fangs at the top of the stairs. He has a hungry look in his eye. Lion. Lion. Hmm. This is the biggest lion you have ever seen. He could eat you with two bites of his powerful jaws. His tail thumps repeatedly on the floor. Let's see here. We could use the sword. We could give him tons of jewelry. He would love that. Ham. He's hungry. Ham. Ham's probably what we need to do here. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Give lion ham hungrily. The lion gobbles down the smoked, smoked ham, and then falls fast asleep. Look, lion. The lion is sound asleep. Pet lion. That would be a wrong move. Kiss lion. Okay. Maybe I'll just open this door. You have found her, the girl from the magical mirror. She is even more beautiful than you had imagined. Girl in the tower. I'm skipping ahead again. King's Quest 6. Um, 
Beware the fairy spells. More. No, do not need to be protected from my true love. She is even more lovely than she appeared in the mirror. Her long auburn hair tumbles in luscious waves down her back. She has the bluest eyes you've ever seen and soft, creamy skin. My name is Valenice. What is your name? Graham, baby. Oh, Graham, I am forever grateful to you. Well, what if I whisper the magical words? Home. You murmur the word home. A tingling sensation envelops your body. You black out for a second. When you come to, you see you are somewhere else. Congratulations, King Graham. You have won the hand of beautiful Valenis. May you two live happily ever after. Oh, we get a little marriage. Save the damsel in distress. Marry her. Make her your queen. You two will rule forever and be happy. Just like all your friends here. Some of them villains, such as Dracula and Hagatha. Dracula's back! Dracula's back! And he's hanging out with Hagatha. They've found love. The monk declares you man and wife. Neptune hanging out with a mermaid. Shark hanging out with a dragon. The wolf and grandma and Little Red Riding Hood, everybody's friends. If you have enjoyed this game, please ask your dealer about availability of uh, more commercials. King's Quest 3, to err is human, to really foul things up takes a computer. Thank you from the King's Quest development team. Ken, Roberta, Saul, Jeff, Chris, Scott, Doug, Mark, Al, Dale. I'm sorry, I missed the last one. Thank you from... Oh, we're getting it again. And most importantly, whoop, Larry, Susan, Russ, Bob, and Kim. And... Emo. Yes. Well, that was King's Quest 2. And I want to thank everyone for joining me on one more grand adventure where we were to find true love. Yes, we accomplished it together, my friends. And I hope you continue joining me for these luxurious, grand, fun adventures on more episodes. Thank you very much for watching Wholesome Let's Plays.